have you got any kind of really accessible top tips, Dr. Linda? Because sometimes I feel like, you know, you want to make a change, but actually it feels like there's quite a high barrier to entry. You might be thinking, I'm too busy today, or actually I just want to hide under a duvet. Or you'll just say to yourself, I'm too anxious, I'll start tomorrow. What would you say to, you know, that part in your mind that's thinking, I just don't feel up to doing it? Yeah. So I think the first thing I'd say is that you need to remember that the underside of anxiety is avoidance, right? So when we're anxious, we're much more likely to avoid. And that's great in the short term, right? Because I'm worried about something, I avoid it and I feel okay. But what happens in the long term is the more that I avoid, the more difficult it is to actually re-engage. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but in those moments where you are anxious and you don't want to connect with people and you don't want to go out, it's when you probably should connect. You should speak about your problems. You should do the thing that's sort of, uh, that, that's worrying you and, and do it in a controlled manner. So I think that's the first thing I'd say. The next thing that I'd say, apart from, you know, again, the basics of eat, sleep and move is about curating your consciousness. I'm really big on this. I do a lot of work on how the, the online world affects our mental health as well. You know, thoughts are not these intangible things, right? We know that. We know that kind of being around people that are talking about negative things will bring you down. You know, listening to negative news stories will bring you down. Well, COVID in a lot of ways was kind of the, you know, the holy trinity of, of threats, right? It was uncertain, which we spoke about, which was a big issue. It was um, novel. We didn't know um, how to deal with it. So it kind of, for that reason, it felt very, we felt very kind of insecure around it um, as well. And we've never seen it before. So I think because of that, we need to kind of be able to deal with our anxiety in terms of focusing on what we can control and letting go of the things that we can't because novelty threat and uncertainty really kind of work together to make us feel sort of overwhelmed so what we can do is be able to spot stress and i think a lot of people listening today might think well what does it look like well it might look like irritation it might look like you know feeling nervous or angry it might look like a lack of motivation right um it might look like having trouble sleeping so catch it when you see it and then you need to be able to ensure that you have a sense of entitlement over your mental health. One of the reasons I'm, I'm delighted to be speaking today is because I've been a psychologist for such a long time, and I can't tell you how many people sit across from me, and the first thing they do is often apologize for being there. Oh, I know I should be able to cope. Oh, I know, I know people have it way worse than me. Well, of course, and we, we can always find someone that has it way worse. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't pause and try and help yourself. But you know, you need to have that sense of entitlement. And there's things that we can do that are very basic. I think the, the most fundamental for me is catching those thoughts, catching those negative thoughts and kind of being able to challenge them. This, you know, this all or nothing thinking, I need things to be perfect or things are gonna be terrible, the catastrophizing. Um, and I think finally and critically, you know, we're social beings. We're not made to go through life alone. So the notion that um, we protect our loved ones when we don't tell them, I'm not so sure is true. I think seeking help from those around us, from our GPs, from amazing organizations like we're speaking about today, I think all makes a lot of sense. Definitely. And, and Harry, just listening to Dr. Linda there, does that information resonate with you? You know, catching those negative thoughts and um, speaking out, you know, just being more open about how you're feeling. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, that comes more naturally to some people than others. Um, you know, and I think particularly in the years gone by, it was, it, there was a lot more taboo, you know, people, it's very frightening mental health. You know, I've, I've been through it and I, you know, I would much rather have a physical um thing that people can see because then it's it's you know you're just dealing with pain you know it's i mean you know obviously that is dependent on how extreme that example would be but it's it's very hard to explain you know i've been there where people just sort of say oh, oh don't worry you'll be all right mate and you know you seem all right what well, you know you seem fine to me and you know and um you know let's go do this that'll make you feel better and you're just thinking my god like this is so frightening because i feel so like that you just literally yeah. don't understand what this is like you know 